Alrighty, hello there everyone, welcome. This will be my sampling video for catching. Um, so I actually already have everything pretty much set up. So just quickly, I'm going to run through everything I did to reach what I believe is about the most optimal um, setup I've got currently. So starting from world one, um, stamps are going to be actually your most important. Um, you want to get the... So for specifically for catching, you want your base efficiency up and your uh, multi-bug. These two are the most important towards your sampling process. Pump those as much as you can. Um, the multi-bug just lets you skip out on higher levels on bug swear. Uh, with the double uh, stamp bonus, it's pretty nice. Same thing with the base efficiency, but the reduction on the base efficiency uh, makes leveling it fairly minimal. But it helps. Next up, we got statues. Uh, the old reliable statue uh, is going to be your best bet here. Farming them in World 2 with the Chaco chip is currently the best way to get them. That or uh, fishing, both of which are fairly viable. Um, and then Feasty statue, again, Chaco chip. It's where your uh, statues are going to come from a lot of the time. Chaco chip is very, very strong. Uh, if you do not have Choco Chip, it's not the worst, but you basically you're probably going to be getting less statues per hour than if you were just actually skilling and farming them that way. So, Next up in World 2, we have... Oh, wait, no, I almost forgot. World 1, we have Star Signs as well. Star Signs, they depend on what your multi-bug is, what the optimal setup is. I have 300% multi-bug without requiring this 20% from here. So I get to skip out on that. If you do not, then this will be your best. Uh, the way to get that is basically going to be through bug squared. So um, then uh, the food effect is going to be basically your strongest star sign, followed by the two skill AFKs. So, and then in conjunction with World 4 lab bonuses that boost it further, it's very, very strong. So that's basically all the World 1 bonuses. Next up in World 2, we've got um, the Big Bubble being the strongest bonus to skilling in the game, basically. I, I would say, at least. This is insane. Having the capped 300% multi chance is very, very strong because that is 300%. Oh, that's a basically plus 300% multiplied by whatever your um, quantity is per drop. So I'll show that in a little bit. But the 300% the is additional to the, the, the original one you're catching. So I'll get four drops and then it's multiplied by it, whatever my bug value is. So that's going to be your best bubble to bet, uh, level. Then Sanic Tools, also very strong. Bubble 2 to then boost it further. And the Premi Green, I believe, boosts Sanic Tools. So, Bubble 7. Yep. Yes or no? Yeah, it does. Um, so, and then you got Fly in Mind as well. Uh, this one, it you don't need as high of a level, actually. It, it starts capping, like, soft capping pretty much at, like, 50. Um, Primigreen, basically take it as high as you can. Uh, but again, also, once you get to around 2x, it's, it's pretty much soft capping. The, um... Where is it? Sandic Tools. Uh, basically, just take this one as high as you can. Uh, I don't know the soft cap off the top of my head, but after around 100, the costs start getting pretty unre un unreasonable. For the bug squared, uh, you basically take it to whatever level you need to reach 300%. And that's dependent on your stamps and uh, I believe your actual catching level uh, contributes to that as well. So there is no real level to take this to. Um, you just keep raising it until you have 300%. And Archer or Bust, basically, again, just take it to as high as you want. I recommend like trying to push these as high as possible. I would say early to mid game, focus on trying to get them to like at least 100 because the spore caps are fairly easy to sustain then. Um, 
then once you're like reaching end game, try to shoot for like 130 to 150. And then after that point, just keep pumping it whenever you can. Um, I went to 160 because the talents, and I actually got lucky on hitting a 160. Because currently they cap out at 160 right now, um, the boost from these. I'm hoping to hit those as well, but I'm actually going to take this higher whenever I get a chance. The sports are quite expensive. All right, anyway, uh, other World 2 bonuses. Obels. Um, pump as many obels as you can into your um, character. I'm missing some circles. They're very tedious to farm through alchemy. The I'm also missing the 250 slot for that. Um, just because I need to level up more. I actually do have the sparkles. See, yep, right here. Boom. Uh, next up is post offices. Boxies, I mean. Uh, catching and food effect are going to be your two go-to for catching. Um, you want those as high as possible. Catching is more important towards catching. That's, you know, would make sense. But uh, food effect is very strong as well, and it's a little bit more versatile. So early to mid game, you can kind of mix and match these two, basically, because the food effect will give you overall gains, whereas catching is just catching. So whichever you're le like having trouble sustaining, put pump more boxes into there. Um, next up, we have the world three bonuses. World three bonuses would be prayers. Uh, Royal Sampler being incredibly incredibly powerful. Sample size caps at 90%. Uh, you can't go above 90%. If I were to take my Royal Sampler off, which I can right now because I removed all my sampling, uh, you'll see I'm at like 62.4. So I'm actually overshooting on the Royal Sampler by a decent chunk. Uh, I would still use it. It's very, very powerful. Um, oops, clicked on the wrong one. And you can check your sample rate from here. So... Go ahead and equip Royal Sampler. I mean, if you don't want Royal Sampler, that's completely fine. It is technically personal preference. I believe it's pretty much always correct to use, though. Um, and then after that, you got Dimwit. Um, try to push the Goblin Max Wave and your your Wizard for worshipping. Uh, Dimwit's very, very powerful. As you'll see, I go from... Um, just about uh, just over 60 million to 155 million so you know a little bit more than double my overall efficiency just from demo alone quite strong next up in world four we have or world three we have the talents uh, you want you're gonna want to book as many catching related talents as possible um, I would focus on elusive efficiency first because uh, this will actually also help your trapping for instance. Um, then from there, focus on telekinetic logs, sunset on the hives, briar patch runner, and swifty statues. And then moving out from there, that's going to be like your core catching statues. Moving up from there, you go for agility again, sanic speed, garb of the unaging, edging quality. Um, and yeah, that's about it. That's basically all the important ones that affect catching. Uh, also, make sure you level up your um, Super Source Action Frenzy. They're quite strong. And Frothy Milk for catching as well. And TikTok. Uh, other than those, nothing really to... Oh, and I guess Toilet Paper Postage. I forgot this actually works now. Um, those are like going to be the talents that you want to focus on for catching, so... All right, next up we have World 4 bonuses. World 4 bonuses are very, very powerful, but mostly just lab. Um, because with the meals, the meals are kind of just not time-gated, but basically time-gated. It, you, it's just going to be your World 4 progress overall. You can't just force the meal to happen. Um, Whereas it's a lot easier to work on, like unlocking your chip slots, for instance, or, you know, grabbing some chips out of either here or, you know, over here. Um, <laughs> uh, other than that, um, so the green jewel that gives skill, if, I think it's skill, base skill efficiency and speed, um, and then it is doubled, I actually don't have, very sadly. 
um, hoping to get it soon. But uh, yeah, currently don't have that one. If you do have it, use it. As far as other ones that help towards catching, not a lot, honestly. Um, the oh, did I crash? The game? Okay, no, just froze. Um, the Sapphire Nevet helps a little bit. The um, Is that the only one? I mean, these other ones will provide passive bonuses as well, like um, you know, boosting your alchemy levels and such. But I think that I think this one's the only other one that actually directly contributes. Huh, funny. I thought there was more. Oh wait, no, no, no. What am I thinking? Those are the only jewels: the certified stamp book and the um, my first chemistry set are very huge. Don't don't want to sleep on those. This one will help you reach um. Uh, 300% uh, multi-bug. You see how it actually went down. Um, and the uh, doubled vials, actually, there's a vial that helps catching efficiency, so uh, that one actually snapshots. 150, so I'm getting 5 million just from doubling the vials. So, you know, small bonuses, but that's what we're all about. All right, next up is the chips, and this is basically where things got start getting a little bit more complicated. I'm trying to rapid fire through all these, as you might guess. Um, so I believe the 15% skilling AFK gain is pretty much a no-brainer, um, pretty much the best one you can get. Next up, we have the, the misc bonus of the pendant, excuse me, the pendant being Persephone's, which is basically just another 15% skill AFK gain. So those two are both 15%. You just can't equip multiples. So Next up, we have the keychain bonus. The keychain bonus, I think, is only better if you have a keychain with seven or higher uh, AFK gains. In my testing, the 5% actually lost to sw swatching, uh, switching this um, chip for 20% total skilling efficiency. So you're going to have to mix and match there. Um, to see basically what bonus is best for you. Uh, after that, card effects. I think both card doublers are best. Um, the cards are just very, very powerful, especially if you have access to Chaotic Troll and such. That being said, again, it's going to depend on what you your account has access to. If you if you have it, you know, great. If not, then unfortunately not. D just use what you have, basically. Um, the star sign bonuses, very good. Uh, this basically is giving me 6% AFK gain and 15% food effect. Very strong in one chip. Um, and then after that, I am using the efficiency bonus. The efficiency bonus is actually marginally better than the base efficiency. So I'm at 155 mil with this. I could show you. Put that one on, and I'm only at 146. So. Uh, Quite comparable. Oh, 150 mil. Whoops. Um, I forgot the idea. I need to turn the uh, vial bonus back on. So 155 mil versus 151. So both of these chips are just good pools. If you get them, great. Both of them are quite helpful. So that's the chip bone. The chip set I came upon to be the best. Uh, I could be wrong because I tested a lot, but you know. They are kind of complicated. Um, okay, next off we have uh, cards. Cards are um, basically, again, depending on what you have and have farmed. I think doubling the Amorak card is always best. Um, and then after that, I think doubling Chaotic Troll is basically always best. There might be some weird efficiency breakpoints where it isn't but in all my testing i found that it was and i guess it also depends on your prowessery uh, which i'll actually go talk about really quick as well the after that though uh basically just chucking in all the catching cards uh, that say uh, catching afk gains efficiency or speed um and basically you can farm these it's quite Tedious. Uh, I card packed most of these and premiumified it, but after that, um, 
the card set you have access to is actually also going to depend. Uh, in my experience, the it, having both boost foods made it so that the yum yum desert effect actually beat out hard resources. So if you don't have the hard resources done, don't fret. If you have boost foods from like um, the events, then yum yum is perfectly fine. Uh, and even if you don't, the Yum Yum Desert is actually quite comparable to the hard resources once you start getting into higher AFK gains. So, uh, As far as skill efficiency went, I found that skill efficiency was always a little bit worse for me, but that being said, again, there might be some weird efficiency breakpoints where it's better for you. It's just one of those things that you have to test yourself, uh, unfortunately. Uh, or you could follow this completely to the T and you'll get fairly close to optimal. Uh, I almost forget to mention Prowessery is another bubble that you really, really want to focus on. Uh, this cap set at 120. Um, that actually is the overall prowess cap for all skills. So if you have this at 120, you actually don't even need leaks. Um, the the meal that is, there's a meal that helps prowess, uh, prowess as well. So if you unlock leaks and you don't have this at 120, focus on leaks. That'll help you save out on gold bars. So. All right, that all being said, uh, you also are going to want to make sure you have your best catching gear equipped. Um, I actually almost made a... Oopsie, I forgot. He added... Um, this has a catching bonus now. So let's go ahead and grab one of them. Marginal difference, but might as well. Oh, I've never made one of these, lol. Sorry, I was going to try to keep uh, all of this building out of the video, but hey, I just remembered about this. Boom. Hey, we got an extra slot, too. No, we didn't. Never mind. I'm crazy. Sadness. All right, and then for gear, you're gonna to want to use the World Four Agi stone or World Four stones for Agi. Actually, help a lot. Nice. Yeah, nice little sizable boost there. Okay, so anyway, so the best gear I found, the the best combos of gear, I guess you could say, was just all the catching gear. Um, Persephone, whatever uh, uh, bow gives you the highest agi bonus. Um, and then the serrated rings, I could actually pump a little bit more agi by making a couple more of these. I found the serrated rings to be better than opals and the, um, in fact, I can show you how different it is from opals for the curious. Mm -hmm. Boom. So you'll see opals actually give a good amount, give me like eight mil, but the serrated rings are just a bit better. So the uh the new AFK key or ring this um I actually can't test it. Uh, I would assume it's just better based on you know where your efficiency breakpoints lie, um, and I would like to have a pair of them. I just don't have any Bob Gold pickles, so yeah. Uh, if you have them, then you're gonna have to manually test that out. I just have no ability to do so. So oh, yeah, sorry about that. And then from there, uh, if you have it, go ahead and use your snoozy cap. If you have it, use your wings, and then whatever your best AFK keychains are. Uh, for trophy, I found food effect to always be best. That said, if you don't have access to the Christmas food, then Blunder Hero might be better. Or even Critter Baron is quite a big efficiency bonus some of the times. So, that all comes together and gets us this nice little screen. And now, let's go ahead and uh, let's do some sampling. So... For 
flies I want to sample. I'm going to go ahead and do just regular flies first. Uh, I actually have a good amount of flies, but I want to keep this a fairly healthy number. I'm going to print about 100 million of them, and then I'll probably swap off. Mm -hmm. And that's giving me, voila, 1.3 million is what my AFK screen says. And when I sample it, it's about 1.17 mil. So that is what our fly sample is. Once I unlock the um, the new efficiency food, and hopefully whenever the jewel bug gets fixed, I'm going to re redo the samples there anyway. So I just want to get a little bit of a stockpile of uh, flies up and running. Next up, we're going to do butter bar. And the reason I'm going to do butter bar is for stamp tramp. Stamp tramp is working now, so I want to pump this as high as I can. Um, and flies is good bubble, good for the Wyoming blood bubble and dropping loads if you haven't pushed it a lot already. I actually plan to push this as well. So, um, whenever you're sampling, by the way, a little fun fact is if you're uh, if you have boost foods on, don't just stand there and like have your character swinging. If you do, you can actually accidentally consume your boost foods up. So go ahead and hit it and then walk away. You'll see that the AFK screen has already been set. So now I see that, you know, I need to get almost nine mil um, more efficiency. Uh, that's not going to be easily doable. And you can, if you really want, you can swap things around and see if, you know, if I drop this, how much, how many Pyros tiers do I go down? Uh, well, can I put this in place? Um, so 537 versus uh, 541. Okay, so the efficiency is a little better. That's kind of the, pro the process I go through whenever I'm sampling. Um, like I said, I'm trying to make the video not so long. Um, you know? Just just mix and match things if you really want optimal samples. If you're like working with very little, you know, spending an extra five minutes and then not touching it for a couple weeks really does help a lot. But I think this is basically about as optimal as I can get mine right now. So I'm gonna go ahead and sample that. Next up on the list, we are going to do um so mosquitoes would be good if I want to push the gospel leader bubble, and I believe I believe there was another one other bubble for that, or no, it was the vial. Yeah, so mesquite snows is what I want to push the vial with, and now that vials have a max level, um, I kind of want to do that. So we're gonna do mesquite snows as well. I don't really have any use for fruit flies at the moment and uh, sentient cereal, so. I'm going to hold off on, on uh, grabbing a pile of them, but eventually, like, towards, like, super late, like, super, super endgame, um, the way I'm thinking about it is I want to get all of these to 10 mil for the green stacks bonus and lab, so I'm going to be swapping between these as, as I can. Um, uh, the reason why, you know, I want the, the mesquite snows right now is just for specifically the alk bubble and, or the so like pushing this bubble is helpful because the lab bonus that raises your lowest bubble a day it, it could be hitting this soon so i don't want that so i'm going to want to push that because it's easier to print mesquite snows than like salts for instance so those are the kind of things i'm thinking about when i'm sampling so let's go ahead and grab mesquite snows that is on Refrigeration station? No, uh, Mammoth Map. So this will be the third sample I take. Oh, and so here we come to where we're like really close to the edge of getting um, a prowess tier. So 150, let's go ahead and put that on. And you'll see I went over and it's just eking it out. So that's like a really quick thing. If you have all your stuff on you, you can check and, you know, it's one click and that got me about an extra 10K to the sample. So those are the kind of things. And I, if I really, really wanted to optimize it, I could leave this on 
and then go, go grab like some more agility percent, you know, rings for instance. Um, I'm not. I'll, I'll spare you guys. Don't worry. But again, those are the things I'm constantly thinking about when sampling. So um, that'll be good for the mesquite snow samples, though. And then for the last two slots I have, I want to get the new mobs or in the new um, flies. I just still don't remember what map they're all on. So bear with me. I think it's this map, Worm Highway, maybe. Nope. Hmm. Jelly Cube Bridge? Jelly Cube Bridge. Okay. Same th same deal here. Um, so 75, 219. 88, 312. So boom, bam. And last but not least, we go to Shelled Shores for the fairies. So let's go ahead and put this back on. So, you know, 60. And if I put this on, you see how it's not, it's taking them away because I'm not between a prowess tier, so. Or I'm between a prowess tier and it's not helping me at all. So 60k. And then, again, you could check this. It's, it's not better. Boom, bam. And that is catching sampled. So let's go ahead and go check them. And uh, I'll go through what to print, like why, what I want to print when. So, um, so personally, right now, I have almost no, like I have 37 million flies. I want to get that to a higher surplus just to have on hand, but I don't need to print any right now, so it's not like a priority. Um, for me, the the new ones, the new bubbles that require the bees and fairies, I want to push those. So I'm going to go ahead and print the World 4 ones. And once I get a, a good amount of, of those stocked up, I'll swap between the mesquite snows and the sentient cereal, or the, uh, the butter bars, and then maybe throw some flies in here and there. But yeah, hopefully that was a little bit of an insightful process. I don't think I left anything out. I, again, I tried to organize my thoughts a little bit better than the last uh, sampling uh, ordeal. So hopefully that was informative and uh, any questions, go ahead and let me know in the uh, comments. Um, but hopefully this was helpful. Thank you all for watching and uh, join me. I believe fishing will be next because doing it by character. So barbarian is next. So yeah, fishing will be next then mining, then chopping. Um, and then mob samples will be sometime next week. Um, basically, I'm waiting on uh, the last little bit on my Woodular Shrine and the last little bit on my Undead Shrine. So both of those are pretty helpful towards mob sampling. And I want to be able to move them with the highest bonus I can. So yeah, um, the other videos will be much of the same. Basically, I'll try to optimize as much as I can. Um, but I also want to throw in some of my process that I go about determining that. So hopefully this was a good mix of brevity and informative. Just uh, let me know if you guys want me to explain anything more. So, All right, now I'll stop rambling. Hey, have a good one.